Right guys, I'm here at the beautiful Travel Lodge and I'm in Manchester. Um, it's obviously the last time you saw a vlog, if anybody watched it. Uh, I say that the next big goal was training with Ricky Hatton. Now a lot of people might have not saw that because if you've probably clicked on this you might have been watching one of these for the first time. Um, sorry, just doing some work. Uh, so again, the first time I missed a streak this year of doing a vlog last week, I've not been well. Still kind of not feeling great today. Um, but I'm not going to come down and not do this, you know. Um, so I'm down here with Andy, and um, we'd booked this a wee while ago. So my first goal this year was to do the ultra marathon, which obviously I get injured with. Update on that, foot feels about 95% now. I could probably really start running. I've not, not really trained as much this week, to be honest with you, but I've definitely not ran. And then this one now was to train with Ricky Hatton because we'd booked in for it. So not feeling the best, um, but I'm not going to not come down and give this my absolute all. So I'm genuinely buzzing for it. Um, I really am. I've just had a coffee. I was doing a wee bit of work there. Um, even, even when I'm away, I'd still do a wee bit. And um, we're going to go down and get some breakfast right now. I have no idea what to have for breakfast. I might put it here somewhere. Um, but I just are genuinely um, nervous and excited for this now. I said it before, but I absolutely idolised uh, Ricky Hatton in my, my late teens, 19, 20, early 20s. Uh, and I really do mean it when I say I watched all his fights. Um, so this is like, I, I, we were trying to talk about this last night a wee bit, I mean, Andy, it's like, imagine in 10 years time if you played football and you got to play football with Ronaldo. That's what this is like. like so go more than 10 years down the line, but go a number of years down the line and I'm getting to go and do some boxing with one of my absolute idols, um, so I'm I'm really excited for it, I really am. Um, I'm a wee bit nervous purely because I'm just not feeling well. Um, I've not trained for Tuesday, I trained on Monday and Tuesday I shouldn't have. Heart rate was through the roof, sweating profusely. Right now I don't have any other symptoms feeling other than um, getting out of breath quite easily. Um, even although I don't feel chesty, it's really strange. And real fatigue, I've never experienced, genuinely this is not a over the top thing, never experienced anything like this in my life in terms of like how fatigued my body feels like around here, um, just even remotely moving about, I just feel dead laboured, but not going to worry about that, um, let's just go, I don't know how much of a vlog or footage I'm going to get, it might just cut on to me doing pads where I can't, I don't know, going to get a vibe for the room, I don't want to start pulling out cameras and tripods and stuff like that if it's just not the vibe in the room, um, so I, hopefully, hopefully I impress a guy, um, I'm genuinely buzzing for this, this is a literally bucket list thing. If I had to go and talk to my younger self to say that this would happen one day, um, I'd be like, aye, okay. Um, but aye, uh, let's go and smash it. Uh, body shop. So what we're going to do is just gonna move about, set it up, and you'll push me on the rope. When I say jab, come in, stay on my chest, work away, everything you've got. You don't stop working until I say. And then I'll say back off now, get back on the jab, set the next attack up, fill your lungs up, get the breather, and then go again. We'll do that about three times, yeah? Yeah? And also you might get a few shots coming back at you, so when you're, when you're jumping moving around, yeah, keep your head doing, yeah? Oh. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 One, two. Yeah. One, two. Yeah. Two, Move in now, stay on the chest now, stay there. Punch away, you haven't been your glove. That's a spring right around now. Yes, that's it. You get the pitch coming. You get behind the elbow, behind the elbow. I'm up the middle. You get down, go right round. Face punching. Face punching, good shot. Face punching, good shot. Keep going. That's it. Back off now, stay up again. Jab. 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 Four, four, two, jab, two, jab, one, two, jab, moving, that's it, take close, push away, back round, back round, back round there, that's it, keep going, keep going, that's it, that's it, keep going, keep going, back off now, jab, 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 one, two, 
Jab. Two jab. Two jab. Down the left hand. One, two. Jab. Jab to the again. Stack it. Put your weight. That's it. Stay calm. Right down. Right down. Full circle. Oh, 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 oh. Jab from that. Go back, man. Keep going. Let's go. Dig in. I just wonder if there's any sort of like routine you do to keep yourself injury free, like you know, in the holding pads all the time. Uh, I don't think there's any routine you, you, know, you do for, um, for, for, for injuries, really. All I can suggest is a good warm up. Yeah. And I think um, one thing that uh, I think I was guilty, I think I was guilty for, you know, no one put it in the, in the gym more than me. But, um, you know, and I've always had a good warm up, and then after my workout and that, and then I, I think, you know, just. Very rarely did it warm down. Yeah, it's just as important as you pull a muscle, you know, if you pull a muscle or anything when you're, you're warming up, you know, you can do it when you warm down. Yeah. But, you know, I was, you know, I, I used to just finish my training, absolutely back to scratch my bottom to get a shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, it's so important, it's so important that you warm down after, and there's so many fighters don't do it. Even at the highest level, I mean, I was at the highest level, never warm down. So, you know, I've, I've learned a lot from what I did right in my boxing career, but as, as, as a coach, I think you learn more of what you you, ne you didn't do. You know, it's like, you know, the, the work with the, my professional fighters, the work I do with the, you know, with the left jab, because I didn't really do enough. I work on defence a lot, because my defence was so attacking that the body punch, I probably didn't work on my defence as much as I should have done. So I do a lot of work on my, my defence, and all my fighters now, full warm up and a full warm down. Yeah. And I think if you do that, you've got to have, you know, you, boxing, you're going to, you're gonna get those broke here and there, oh, you know, or, 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 you know, like that. Knock your hands up, 
But as far as, you know, injuries in general, pull muscles and strain and stuff like that, I just think warm up proper and warm down. Yeah, does that apply to like when you're holding the pants yourself as well? Because obviously it's quite a lot Yeah, I think it's the same, the easiest thing you do. And I'm probably guilty of that actually as the trainers that happen, you know what I mean? You, you know, you, you give it a bit of that, bit yeah. of that, bit of that. But, you know, full blown warm ups now. And like, boxing has changed so much over the years, you know what I mean? I'm not joking, you know. A warm up in the day was, you know, Stretch your groin, stretch your back, stretch your thing, that was it now. But now, you know, you've, you've got the bands that you, you know, you are up with, you know, now, which, you know, and it's that muscle, um, muscle memory type thing, you know, you know, when you're having a warm up, you know, it's, it's changed so much. And it's so important, you know what I mean? You know, uh, you've got to do everything in, in boxing these days, you know, your, your training's got to be right, your warm ups got to be right, you warm down, your training, your sparring, your pad work, your nutrition, you know what I mean, your, your rest. Everything's, you know, come on someone, I mean, the days went rocky when you were chasing chickens and having more eggs. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you've got, you've got to be meticulous and everything you've done, and that's how sport, that's how sport in general's got to fit these days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a question. So I read your book, The War and Peace book that you wrote. Um, I just wanted to ask about how many, you said you had five meals a day to lose weight and you weren't a believer of it but your coach said that when you your coach told you to eat five meals and now you're a believer of eating five meals to lose weight do you remember what you did a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just you know it, it's just the same boring old crap I mean to be honest with you you know you have, um, they have you can do them in prep meals now I mean most 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 boxers do that and there's, they're all over it's, it's all the rave now and it's true but it used to just you know just like you know your, your green veg you know your pasta your chicken you know what I mean it, you know just a little bit of fish and just just stuff like that but obviously you know when you train twice a day you do your gym work you know your gym work in the day and then you have a few hours off and then you do your you know your your, your role work of an evening or oh, some fighters like to do it early early morning but the thing is you do two works hour a day your metabolism's constantly racing all day then through the two work hours so as long as you're eating the right stuff and instead of having like three a breakfast and dinner and an evening meal what you do just imagine shoving it all together and then you stick it out over five and what you do because of your training you lose it through your training but to be honest if the meals are small you know small like that your metabolism will lose any any surplus calories if you like you know because i mean if you have three your body can only metabolize so many calories per meal you know what i mean so if you have a big you know a big like meal for breakfast you know your body's only meta metabolizing half of it so the rest gets stored as body fat and that's how you that's how you people struggle making their weight having a big meal so just imagine putting that it's the same the same stuff you know what i mean in these bread meals now you know some days you'll get a bit of pasta some days you'll get a little bit of chicken some days you get a little bit of, you know a bit of salmon sometimes you get a bit of fish sometimes you get a bit of rice with it and you just and it's basically the same boring crap but it's what it, it's what it has to do and then in between you'd have like a you know, if you're feeling a little bit, well, it's not working hard and I don't feel that this is feeding me, you know, you can slide a little protein shake, you know, or a meal replacement or something, you know, something like that. But generally, that's the gist of how you do it, anyway, yeah. So, you know, where uh, Christian Banks fights against uh, uh, Liam uh, Smith? And he came in and he's all tired and he said it was like because he had to do a dramatic weight cut. Uh, something like fifty pounds or something you have to lose. What's the most you've had to cut for a fight? <coughs> um, I think the most I had to cut was three and a half stone once. So, <laughs> yeah, I got. Um, I had a fight against the guy called uh, Vince Phillips uh, when I was WBU champion, and um, uh, a clash of heads cut me, and it <coughs> needed surgery in the end. Uh, you know. It was worse than the one he had one against John Faxton for the British title, which was in the first ten seconds that needed um, uh, surgery. But the one against Vince Phillips, um, I had about um, I had to have about five months off or something, five months, six months off or something like that. So, <coughs> so obviously piled the, the the weight on. But um, but my next fight, you know, the thing is with me, there's one thing I, I was like, I, I wish I could have found a happy medium. You know, in between being in the gym, I did everything like wake me food, you know me. Billy said go to bed at that time, get up at that time, train at that time, run at that time. I did it. But in between <laughs> in between fights. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, normal. Yeah, I walk a day, I walk a disaster. But, but you know, I wish I could have found every meeting. But I, I never I never struggled with making the weight once the the, the different the thing was, was me was 
I give myself like because I had that much weight to lose. Instead, I give myself a ten week training and I give myself a fourteen week one, so to do it correctly in that. And by the time, because one thing you can make any weight. All of us can make any weight. You just don't need it. But in boxing, you've got to make the weight and maintain the stamina and the conditioning and the strength. You know, you need your stamina and all that. So you can say, you know, you can say, well, I was dedicated, or you can say, I wasn't, you know, uh, dedicated. I, 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 I try to use. I think I prefer to use the first one. I just wish I could have found a happy medium because if any of my fighters now, you know, they get told, you know, listen, you know, you've got a week off there, but when you come back, I don't want you anymore. Then we all weigh differently. Some people put weight on like there's no tomorrow, like me, and some people. They can eat what they want, drink what they want, they don't put an ounce on. Get some nice nerves. The point I'm making is, is, is like, you know, I find my certain fighters, you know, he, he's, he's more, he puts on weight quicker than the others. They can have a week off, but I don't want you coming back any more than six or seven pounds overweight, you know what I mean? So, you know, make, make sure you do that. And when they come in, I weigh them before the training session, I weigh them after the training session. And in hindsight, maybe Billy Graham should have done that with me, to be honest with you. But, uh, I think the damage that I did for making the weight, I didn't struggle to make the weight. It's an accumulation of years gone by, your body, you know, sooner or later, you know, like up in weight, down in weight, up in weight, your, your body, your organs, sooner or later, I've got to go, listen, you've been doing this for the last God knows how many years, no, I fucking had enough, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it was the, I think I could have probably boxed for another two or three years if I had looked after myself a bit better and done the weight differently. But I think. That. In many ways, that's why I had the fan base, because really, I was a little yeah. scary one. <laughs> <laughs> so, would, it, would I change it? Would I change a thing? I wouldn't change nothing. But if my boxers uh, do what I did, they get through through the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, does that mean you lost three and a half stone in 14 weeks? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Next question, please. I was just wondering, is there ever a time when you like question whether you were going to win when you were fighting, whether it's like, you remember you saying when you fought Pacquiao, you were like drained from the sparring, you know, or when you were going up a way, did you ever sort of think? No, I thought I was going to win everyone, everyone, even when I fought Mayweather. Even when the fight was dragging away from me, sliding away from me towards the end, um, uh, I still thought I was, I was going to win. But the, the only one with the Pacquiao fight, I just, uh, I knew that. Uh, too much wear and tear, you know, up and weight, down and weight, up and weight, down and weight, my lifestyle, you know what I mean? And um, and obviously, you know, don't we, uh, you know, we talk about Costa Zoo fighting Mauser and Palazzo and Castillo and Mayweather and Pacquiao and Malinard, you know, they, before I fought all them, I had 15 defences of the WBU before I went on to, to that level. So I'm with my style of fighting, which was sometimes you know, tech, tech one to get, you know, tech three or four to get one in, you know what I mean? And I was attacking, I was a body puncher. I wasn't destined for a long career. To be honest with you, the fact that I had 48 fights with how I used to fight and how I mean lifestyle, it was incredible that I had 48, <laughs> to be honest with you. But no, it was only the Pacquiao fight. I just thought, you know, the training camp has gone shit here. He's bombing everyone out here. Um, and wear and tear, you know what I mean? You, you can tell when, um, you know, I, I knew, you know, when I had, um, when I, I fought Lascano, I, I got beat by Mayweather, you know, and then uh, I fought one Lascano and it wasn't a great performance. And then I fought Paulie Malinaji, which was a great performance, you know what I mean? But that, I, I knew, I knew I'd come to the end even for the Malinaji fight. I thought, you know, the reason why I've looked so good against Malinaji is because he couldn't punch. He had no, <laughs> he had no power. And you know, if you fight Ricky Atten, you haven't got no power, you know what I mean? So I think that uh, it was one of my best performances, but it flattered me a little bit because obviously the fellow I had in front of him couldn't punch. Mm -hmm. So and so, so but then, but ultimately, you know, I got beat by Floyd, I'd had two wins, one against Malinaji and then the fight against Pacquiao come up and I think, uh, before the camp, it started well and everything like that, I thought, I'm gonna be all right, I've got half a chance here, I feel great, feel this, feel that, and then towards the last, a um, couple of weeks, I thought, I, I thought Floyd Mayweather Senior, who was my trainer at the time, I thought I've peaked here, I've done too much. I went, Floyd, I need to have a bit of a rest here. He said, rest. He went, no, 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 I know what I'm doing, we need to get a few more rounds out. And I went, you know, I, I said to him, Floyd, I said, I'm prepared for about 20, 25, fucking 12 rounds, you know what I mean? I, I, I know my body. I'm full Floyd. No, 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 no. And I should have, I should have, so like, done like that. But like a boxer, don't you? You know, you don't like saying no. We went, yeah, go on. And I went through it. And by the time the fight come, 
Yeah, I thought I was walking to my own funeral, if I'm brutally honest, and to fight someone like Pacquiao, who was knocking everyone out at the time. It wasn't uh, what happened, happened really, and then obviously I knew we had to retire then, but I think I knew before the Pacquiao fight. Yeah. Yeah. Next question, anyone this time, we'll come back to you probably. Can I just ask, because you're a strong advocate for mental health and the boxing, when you were like training and your training camps, was that a factor, the mental health dipping or...? No, I, um, I got beat by Floyd Mayweather and that was my first defeat, first time I'd been knocked out and I found it very hard to come to terms with. I, I always had it from a young um, from a young age, you know, when I, my, first, my first 12 months as a fighter, I had nine fights in the first 12 months, you know what I mean, so I went up. Um, so consequently, I wasn't seeing my mates, I was in the gym all the time training, you know, like, like you do. But, uh, and then I started, you know, speaking, speaking to my mates on the phone, you know, because I wasn't going out or anything like that, I speak to my mates on the phone, oh, superstar, where are you, you know, we're not seeing you for a bit, so you on the telly and all this and that. And me, my own stupid fucking head, I thought, Superstar, do they, do they think I'm getting above my station? Do they think I'm getting a bit too big for me boots? Me, that's that's how I, I thought. So I started having to go to the pub and having an orange juice and having a pill and having a dance. But in my head, I'm thinking they think I've, I've, I've got too big for myself, you know. That, that's a that's a sign of it, you know, early early doors. And I, I, so I, I always had it, but then when they were, I got beat and uh, I couldn't leave the house for about three or four weeks, sportsmen dinners stuff like this you know i'd walk down the down the high street there and i uh, i thought everyone was laughing at me no one was laughing at me you know they couldn't be proud of but in my own mind i'm thinking oh no i let down i've done this i've done that you know so then and then i uh, boxed that city so my confidence was back up again with mental health you know and then i i boxed and then i uh, fell out with billy gray the trainer so my head fell off again there and then I boxed Malinardi, beat him, Nolan Liam carried the belts in for me, I thought, a great performance, I thought, you know, I'm back up again. And then I got beat by Pacquiao in two rounds, which was devastating. And then I meant I had to retire. And then shortly after that, I fell out with my mum and dad. So, you know, uh, it, was, it was it was always there from day one. And then some, and some, a lot of things that happened in the ring, defeats, and then stuff in my personal life. Yeah, I didn't care whether I lived or died. Yeah, really tried taking my life several times. It was a real horrible time just the people around my, my area to see the the state I was in you know what I mean it was uh, it was shocking but bit by bit you know I got myself together kept myself busy you know and, and stuff like that and uh, uh, I couldn't do it myself so I had to I, I went and knocked on, on a, a door in Manchester you know the psychiatrist and I just said listen you need to help me and you need to tell me what to do because I said, if you don't tell me what to do, I can't fucking do it. I said, if you don't tell me what to do, I won't be here tomorrow. I'm going to kill myself. You need to tell me what to do. Well, bit by bit, he spoke to me and I got myself in a little routine. I was doing different things, you know, and, and stuff like that. And, uh, and I've never looked back, really, to be honest with you. It was, it was, it was a grand in work in progress over the, yeah. over the years. But I think, you know, this 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 is the happiest that Ricky's you know, been. I mean, I did me... Uh, the exhibition against Marco Tony Barrera, you know, the other November. Uh, I did my documentary, which ended up yes. brilliant. It was up for a BAFTA, you know what I mean? Uh, I went ice skating and got a bird. So, but the thing is, the top and bottom of it is good times don't last, you know what I mean? And, but the best thing you can do is, is go and speak to someone. The best thing I did was go and speak to someone. Can't do it yourself, and there's no. I do what I couldn't walk in my local. I've got good mates. I couldn't walk in the local of my pub and go, Listen, lads, can I share something with you? I'm <laughs> fucking crying every fucking day and I want to kill myself. What do you think I should do? They think fucking rich lots, eh? you know. Uh, so yeah. you, you keep it in, you don't, you don't yeah. do it. And that's the best thing, that's the best thing you can do. And you feel better telling a stranger. Yeah. You don't want to tell your family because you don't want to worry. You don't want to tell your mates because they'll think you fucking lost the plot. Uh, yeah. So go and tell a stranger. There's no looking back when you do that. Yeah, sorry. Um, you know, with uh, when you're on like uh, top end of the fight and that, and you've got like hundreds of thousands of people in front of you, it's probably a uh, mental health, I suppose, uh, scenarios on it as well. It's how you keep yourself calm, how you keep yourself focused, and that. Do you have anything that you? Any sort of like a routine or a, a no, I think I think you're, it was very good the way I, I was brought up. Um, um, 
uh, as when I first turned professional, I boxed under Otto Nassim Hamed's undercards when I first come up. So I ended up fighting on big, big shows. So I got used to the big crowds. And, you know, even before I started fighting the titles, I got used to the, the big crowds. And it was good by that. But I think, um, I think that's the difference between, um, don't get back me when I say this, your average fighters and the, 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 the champions is that, you know, you don't, you don't know what it is. You don't know how to prepare for it. You just do, you know what I mean? And it's, uh, uh, and I, you know, as an amateur, I used I used to love the crowd. The world, of when, the, the nervousness when I used to walk with the changes to the ring, used to be, oh, you know, why am I doing this? <laughs> but then when you retire, it's the first thing you miss that that nervousness, that adrenaline, that you know, that you know. So when I was an amateur, I used to love the crowd. The crowd, go on, Nicky, you know, I. Uh, but I used to play to the crowd as an amateur. You know, they say, listen, you know, you you. you Playing to the crowd, you, you're playing to your mates. You did that. This is to me. You know, so that was good. You know, from a young age. You know what I mean. And then as I got, you know, it was on the undercards and that same moment. So I boxed in some big arenas and big, big shows. So then when I, um, when I, when I got to the top level, I had the right preparation. But I think you know, it's, I think, it, I think it's something you, 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 you've got in you. You know what I mean? It's you know, you know, it's on. It was on like HBO and then it was on Sky Box Office and it was all over the world and you know you, you know millions of people seeing it you know and thousands of people live and stuff like that and it's you know it's the, the sometimes the difference when you're at that top level in 50 50 fights where you're evenly matched sometimes it's the one that can hold his nerves a little bit better if you hold your nerves a little bit better you know you're going to you know react to the crowd a little bit better if you can hold your nerves a little bit better you're going to listen to the advice your coach gives you in that minute do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where some people are not like, oh, I've had trained fighters and they've got, oh, oh hey, what, what was that? What was that? What? <laughs> <laughs> I think if I, if I haven't got it, oh, you, you, you can't. But I mean, it's, you know, it's it's hard. And I just tell him to, to all my fighters, you know, it's not about the crowd. It's not about you, who you're fighting next if you beat him. You know what I mean? It's not about that. It's, it's, it's all about that. It's just him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, a few more questions. Any more? Alright, Ricky. Um, what do you think about strength conditioning from a young age and mobility? Uh, strength and conditioning. Uh, it's got like when I was speaking earlier, wasn't it? You know that the the days of um, you know Rocky Rocky Balboa and you know and, you know and, uh, chase chickens and raw eggs. Them days, them days are gone, and it's so important. And I think you know it's like people. I mean, Billy Graham was a little bit before his time. I used to do I used to do weights. You know when I was you know. And Kerry Kays, who was my nutritionist and my um, you know strength coach, um, he was the best. In, he was the best in the business, and he said, "Listen, he said, you know, if you know, if you if you do a bit, of, you know, a bit of resistance work and a bit of strength work, you know, stronger mu mu muscle is more explosive." He said, "You know what I mean?" But he said, "You do the strength work and you do the weights work, but you know, you the what weights you lift and what resistance what you do has got to be geared to the boxing." You know, there's no problem, you know what I mean? All my weights, you know, are doing, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, your deadlifts, you know what I mean? Because that's where your punches come from, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, you you know, you, you do, you, you know, you do you, you, you twist like that, but that's where your punches come from. You catch a shot, you come back with a shot, you catch a shot, you come back from your shot. We do weight training, you know, like this, you know, what, well, it? Because if you're in a clinch, you want to go, for, you know, push him out of the way and stuff like that. So, I mean, if it's geared towards the boxing, you know, but if it's, you know, if it, but if it's not geared towards the boxing, you're wasting your time, you know what I mean? You know, it's what you do technically in the gym, a, a little bend of the knees, a little twist of the waist, you know what I mean? A little drop, a little drop of the shoulder, something like that. And that's what your weight do. You know, you do like, you know, drop, drops of the shoulder, drops of the shoulder. So it's all geared around, you know, what you're doing here. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's, 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 it's no point having strong muscles if it's the muscles that you're not going to use. When you get there, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. And nutrition, that makes sense, doesn't it? And nutrition goes without saying, you know, you've got to make the weight right, you've got to have the right tune and that, because it doesn't matter how many rounds you're doing here, if you don't make them scales weight on the day before, you might as well not bother doing this in here. And it was like a 14 year old girl, she, my daughter's been doing strength lessons since she was eight years old. Movement and stuff. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I, 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 I started doing strength and fitness um, on weights when I was 16. I think it's good, yeah, as long as it's not too much, you know, when you're 16 and your body's still growing, you don't want to kill yourself, you know, but it does you no harm. Yeah. Ricky, you've spoken a lot about your mental health today. 
which is brilliant. I, I work in an institution that deals with uh, mental health patients. And I'm also writing a book and a short documentary about uh, the fight of mentality. What, what, what one tip would you give someone to develop a fight of mentality with regards to the fight or, or normal civilian, if you like? Um, I think my best quality would be self belief. And self belief, and believe it or not, you know, um, even though I went on to do what I, what I did. When I was first getting up, before I got on the world stage, people were saying, oh, Ricky's a, he's a great kid, he's a good lad, you know, he's exciting, isn't he? Body puncher, he sells a load of tickets, oh, he's good fun to watch, isn't he? But uh, his defence is, you know, a little bit ropey, you know what I mean? You know, he gets cut, you know, all the time and don't look after himself enough. When he gets to that top level, he'll, he'll get found out. And I, I, I used to think, oh, I'm a dickhead. <laughs> I'll show you, you know what I mean? And I used it for, and I thought to myself, and I used to say to Billy Graham, I said, looking at all the papers here, you know, against Koski Zoo, you know what I mean? You know, Zoo to winning two rounds, Ricky to not go past six, they got every single paper. I don't remember that. Which I couldn't fucking be. <laughs> you know, and I used to think to myself, have I, have I seen something there not, or am I deluded? And Billy Graham used to say, no, you're not deluded, just have faith in yourself and have faith in us and our game plan, fuck, fuck, fuck the papers. Yeah. And that's the best thing, I, the best, that's the best thing I do. And I think that, that attitude, I think, you know, it's not a boxing thing, I think it's life. Someone tells you you can't do it. You're not good enough. You can't do it. You know, I, you know, after I got beat by Mayweather, I, um, I put loads of weight on. As I, as I said to you, I was depressed. I was down, and I felt like packing it in. And I put loads of weight on, and they put a picture in the paper saying Ricky Fatton. We won't see Ricky Hatton again. You know what I mean, Ricky Fatton. You know, and um, and I used to, I used to think I never had an argument with the the, the sports press. I got on well with them all. I really did. You know, but I, um, I used to think, oh. I, I didn't want to bag my home anyone out because it wasn't my style. Well, I'll, I'll fucking show you. So the fight at Man City, I come out in a fat suit, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> you know, talk about you know getting beat by May with a fifty-five thousand at City Manchester Stadium. I come out in a fat suit and I it had Ricky Fatton on it, and I looked down at just all the press row and I just went. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, you know, that that was my, you know, like, you know, like self belief. You know, he won't come back again. We've seen the last of it. Oh, really, yeah. really. And I think that's the way you 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 got to be. You know, anything you do. That's one more question. But you see, you mentioned your the cost is your fight. But what would you rate as your best boxing performance? Um, I would say the cost is your fight was my best win. But in the best boxing performance, um, because um, sometimes, you know, because, uh, you know, you know it, it can be a war, you know, when we're both going at it and everything like that. Everyone thinks, you know, sometimes, you know, t to be a best boxing performance means you both have to be at a distance and that, mm. you know. But I mean, to be honest, I think it's harder to box when you haven't got the distance, when you haven't got the room to manoeuvre, you haven't mm. got, the, you know, to make stay when it's pushing and pulling and, you know, holding and hitting. And, and then it's on the distance, you've got to work your way in, and then when you get in there, there's grappling and everything like that. I think that's the hardest part of of the game, you know, to be a body puncher up close and stuff like stuff like that. So, and you've got to know, I knew with Costas who went to, when I needed to put my foot on the gas, mm. you know, to, to set a pace, and then I thought, you know, well, he, he's got to, because he was, he was, he was, um, he's, he'd not gotten more than three rounds for about three years because he was knocking everyone out so I thought I'm going to start fast the first 200 mile an hour so he's got to start then he's got to raise it rounds you know three four five six so what I do I, I, I say oh, I'm, all right I'm going to win the first two but I'm going to give you the next fucking three but I'm going to keep my foot on the gas I'm going to stay close to you I'm going to squash you pull you nub you you know, a few body shots up the bread basket, solid ones or two. <laughs> and then, you know, after, you know, then, so then that's like three rounds to two. Then I thought, right, I'll put my foot down on the next two here. And he's got to raise it again. But they, he'd, he'd not gone more than three rounds for three years. So that was the right game plan, you know. So if yeah. you look at it from a, what would be best tactically yeah. boxing performance, I would still say it was the, uh, the Costa Zoo fight. There was other performances like I boxed Ben Tacky. And um, when I was WBU champion, where they absolutely boxed his boxed his ears off, and then I yeah. boxed a guy called Ray Oliveira, yeah, who showed me boxing skills uh, against him, which I didn't do often enough. I think if I had done, I think I could have had a longer career, along with ballooning up and down in weight and all that stuff. But um, 
But yeah, but I think I think the smartest fight I boxed was the Gossi Zoo fight, yeah. Right. Hey guys, so there we have it. Getting to train with my absolute idol and Ricky Hatton. Now I know a lot of people say that, but genuinely, um, as I said before, I keep repeating myself, but just going through watching his fights and he almost gone through his career realm via screen. It was absolutely amazing to even share that wee round that I got in with him. So a review on the day. I mean it's quite good. I think you do circuits, do pad work. You interact with Ricky a wee bit. Um obviously it's quite busy. And uh, then you get around with Ricky. But it's last probably about 90 seconds or so, which is understandable if it's if it's busy. But one there's one quote that always I always think about that worried me where they always say, don't meet your heroes, don't meet your idols, because you'll be disappointed. No, I wasn't. Like, as much as I didn't have much interaction with him one on one, um, he's such a warm guy. Like, he didn't seem like a celebrity. Like, just seemed like he was there, lining the lads. Another boxing coach, you know. So that was fantastic. I'm obviously out of run right now, but I shouldn't be. I'm just still on a high for yesterday and the foot's feeling good. So, yesterday when I was doing that round, I think my heart rate peaked at 220. But again, people are saying that's not possible. I can't express how ill I've been feeling. So today I'm just running at a nice pace, nothing mental, just to recover. So I, um, as you know, as you saw, I never got much footage because it just wasn't, I didn't feel like it was appropriate the way we were all training. I'd been hodding everyone up. So, I just got the main parts where Ricky was and obviously talking about stuff in his Q&A. So again, thanks for watching. I want to say a massive thank you to Chris, Stacey and Maggie for getting me a coffee and Frank sausages. Now I'm not just saying this, I accidentally deleted the footage like a dick, so I will make sure I get some more. And if you want to buy me a coffee, but more importantly, Frank sausages, then there's a link in the description below. You know, an amazing week. I'm so grateful I was able to do it. I was doubting at the start of the week I was going to be able to because I was ill, but we got there. So, at least we've got one goal done. So, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.